I do enjoy the the teamwork and the interaction and the just being part of a larger team. It's a it's a very positive atmosphere, and if you have a good place like that to develop in, then you can really grow as a person. And um, Nendaiko's level of quality and professionalism is uh, has really helped me increase my uh, skill level compared to my my previous. Um, endeavors for Tycho. I'm not nearly as in shape as I thought I was. <laughs> this is a very taxing <laughs> hobby and <laughs> physically demanding and oh I'm not nearly as in shape as I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> so something I definitely learned about myself is that I need to be just generally patient. <laughs> Um, with especially with learning styles and different teaching styles um, throughout my life I've been in different workshops and you know teaching situations and you know everybody has their own teaching styles and adapting and trying to understand what they're trying to say and also when you are the one teaching you have to adapt how you're phrasing things how you might explain something because it may not always click for certain individuals and I think it helps me be more introspective for myself too of paying attention to my own body when I'm trying to adjust someone's stance or form and you can't just say right like this looks off it's like why does it look off and um, kind of trying to understand what parts of the body really make the form right and type right and if it's a technique thing or a musical thing not everybody has the same knowledge um, when it comes to musical background so being able to adapt the way you teach in that sense also has been a learning opportunity. The appreciation that I have towards learning um, music, other cultures, um, people's experiences as well I've learned that I like connecting with people and connecting to music so I think um, Taiko is a great way for me to do that. I think I've learned how I can encourage people to try new things, um, to um, especially things that they might not be as comfortable with. And it's, it's funny because I was thinking about this when you asked the question. Um, and for me, that I, I think I really realized that when I first was exposed to Taiko in Japan. So when I was in Japan, there were all these things that I had never done. And I realized that if I didn't take advantage of them at that time, I might not have the chance again later. So there were lots of things that I didn't feel comfortable with that I did during the time I was in Japan. So when I came back here, I've tried to apply that to other parts of my life. So when I joined Nendaiko, um, you know, a lot of our songs, we have a repertoire, a lot of the things we do are very uh, rehearsed so that we get good at them, so that we can polish the skills. But that also means that sometimes people aren't comfortable changing things and trying new things and trying new ideas, um, modifying things that are more traditional. Uh, and I think that because of my Again, when I first was exposed to Tycho until now, I think if you aren't willing to take some risks and try new things, then you can kind of get stuck. And so what I've tried to do is find a way to encourage people to kind of get outside their comfort zone a little bit. Um, there was a song or a speech where they said, you should try something every day that scares you, right? And I think that's a good, a good motto. And so I think we should try new things and keep evolving. And so I've learned that People are usually really open to it. You just have to get the idea out there in a non-threatening way. And then if you do it and it's successful, then people love it and want to try new things, so. I think probably something that I knew about myself but has really been reinforced is how much I appreciate uh, interdependence. Um, and really like the idea, because we talk about it so much in Nendaiko, is how we all rely on each other. Um, and how we can't function without each other, right? That there's no one person that makes everything happen um, and that it's all of us doing it together and um, building that community and weaving together interdependence um, that really makes uh, for a, a good group and a good uh, tight kind of close knit family. Yeah, so one of the things I enjoy about 
being in Nendaiko is I don't have to lead the group. And I am eternally grateful to those who have taken the leadership positions in Nendaiko. Um, I do a lot of other things at the temple. And so Nendaiko for me is one where I can just be a member. And um, I think it's, it's also because our group doesn't have a singular leader or um, teacher to whom we all you know, take direction from or from whom we take direction. So um, that is the kind of community that I thrive in, right? Where each group member um, can voice their own opinions and be heard and we work together as a group. And I think that is something that I have uh, internalized even more as I take on other leadership positions in other places. And Nandaikwa is just a place where I can be a contributing member and enjoy that. Learning about myself, uh, the, the interdependence, I think, is uh, something that is very real. Uh, there are moments, I'm an introvert, I like to kind of distance myself when I get overloaded. I want to recharge by myself. Uh, I can take that to extremes. Sometimes that's uh, not necessarily part of the interdependence. So I've learned that, you know, even if I want to be deep in my feelings and do, you know, something else, I owe it to a number of other people to deliver on some things. So it, it's part of being a family, it's part of being part of a group, it's part of uh, responsibility, and that's something that uh, makes me a better person, and I think it helps the group as well. So something I've learned about myself uh, by being an Nendaiko member is, um, so when I first came to Nendaiko, there were times where I felt like maybe I shouldn't be there because I didn't have a musical background, and I wasn't a Buddhist and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to contribute at the same level as the other members of the group. And so I I think I had an attitude that I just had to whew, like give 150% all the time and that I that meant having very high expectations of myself and putting a lot of pressure and also you know I understood the concept of interdependence and that we were in this together, but I also sometimes tended to fall to the space of my ego and am I giving enough? Am I um, performing at a level that this group needs? And focusing too much on that and less on questions of interdependence and impermanence. Um, so after I was a member for uh, eight years, I had gotten to the point where it wasn't as much fun for me and I was really stressed out <laughs> about it. And so I took a year off from being an Indico member. So I came back this year and it has been so lovely and I feel like I have been able to push past that um, misconception that that's not the point, <laughs> that I am here because I contribute in the way that I contribute and I, the best thing to do is to be myself. And um, that is what is gonna make Nendaiko the best group it can possibly be. And that I wanna value every moment for what it is and not worry so much about it being the way I planned or a, a certain specific image of what it might need to be, but just enjoy the moment.